Shalom. Shalom and welcome. Welcome to the White Rose Family Channel. If you are tuning in for the first time, my name is Simonai, and these are the words I'm compelled to present before an awakening set apart nation. This series, The Final Exodus Countdown, is presented. And let me just say this, my brothers and sisters. I normally don't mention dates or bring out dates, but there are a lot of compelling evidence that I've experienced that have led me to believe that December, what's known as December 21st, 2023, is the pivotal point where we will see evidence of our final exodus. I believe that is the year that Joshua will leave the various countries that they're in, those that will be drawn from the four corners of the earth and be returned or, re or we will return to the promised land. Those who have been chosen for his esteem, not everyone. Remember there will be martyrs. There'll be those that will fall away. There will be those that will be left behind. There'll be those who will pass before such time and events. But before I continue, let me say this. The views expressed in these messages do not necessarily reflect the views of the owners, managers, and or shareholders or sponsors of this media platform. With that said, let's get started. Yasharal, the final exodus. It will prove to be a time where there will be unity among the set-apart children of Yahuwah. And unity will come as a result of discipline, being refined by his spirit as he works in us, through us, one towards another. It is important for us, O Yasharal, to begin to recognize the very things we say we believe, we must demonstrate that belief wholeheartedly and unwaveringly. And in these end times, as uncertainty ramps up among those who are undiscerning, unlearned, and disobedient, as all these emotional, mental, and spiritual challenges come before us, O Yasharal, we will begin to realize that the promised discipline that the Almighty Father is necessary. For some, it will be light. For some, it will be subtle. And some, it will be severe. For some, it will be sickness. For some, it will be sickness unto death. For others, it may be other conditions that are a fruit of rebellion. But for the obedient, for those who earnestly seek to do the will of the Almighty Father, for those who acknowledge that it is the Father who draws us to Yahushua, which name represents his word brought before us physically and spiritually. Yashara or Yashara, in this installment of the final Exodus, one of the things that we must begin to come to the realization of is marriage, matchup. Let me ask you a question, O Yashara. Do you believe it would be wise to think that Yahushua is coming for one person as his bride, one, one bride? Or do you believe or have you learned that there are many members to the set-apart family of Yasharal that makes up one body, one bride, the bride of Yahushua? Right now, O oh Yasharal, there are so many things that separate us, but believe it or not, if we were to examine them thoroughly, it would make sense from a set apart and spiritual way holy. And before I get into this marriage matchup and Yahuwah making us whole, let me say this, O oh Yasharal. Do you believe the scriptures are designed for us to pick what we want, shape it to fit our construct, our mental capacity, or the way we've been programmed and conditioned by another, whether it be a parent, a guardian, someone else in the household, the community, the neighborhood, a church, a gathering, an assembly, a community? Do you believe the scriptures are designed for us to do what we want with them. 
Believe it or not, Yasharal, there are so many of us that are as living contradictions. We say we believe the scriptures, but yet we fight so vehemently against it, so vigorously. Many of us are walking contradictions and don't know it. How would you feel if someone told you to go to a destination and you took one step forward and two steps back? Would you ever reach your destination? How would you feel if we were on milk forever and never touched meat, but we hear the mature talk about it? How would you feel to be missing critical components of anything that you desire? Yasharal, my brothers and sisters, marriage matchup. Some of you might not like this title, but come with me as we get into it. I want you to be mindful of these words, O Yasharal. In Matthew 12, 25, it states, And Yahushua knew their thoughts and said to them, Every rain divided against itself is laid waste, and every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. All of these governments that we see have their different ways of managing the populace within various geographic boundaries. And the United States is not exempt. But so many of us fail to realize and say if it's divided against itself, it's going to be laid waste. It's going to come to an end. All of these nations will come to an end to some degree because they are divided. They are not executing the ways, the living orders, the commandments from the Almighty Father, Yahuwah. But as it relates to marriage, Yasharal, do you think that Yahushua would have a bride divided against itself? That he would have set apart children divided against themselves? No, this cannot happen. For Yashara will stand, Yashara will emerge victorious, Yashara will demonstrate 144,000 Hebrews or Abrahim from each of the 12 tribes of Yashara as mentioned in Revelation 7 chapter. In addition to that, a great multitude of many nations, kindreds, and tongues, all together grafted under one banner by Yahushua Mashiach, by the blood of the Lamb, by the power and might of the Spirit of Yahuwah, by the plan that he has laid forth. It could be no and will be no division. You might say, what does this have to do with marriage? You see, Yashara, we must understand the whole dynamics of marriage. Do we believe marriage is more about a man, one man, one woman, and that's it? Having children in their own family? Oh, Yasharal, Yasharal, we stop ever so often with scriptures to fit our own belief for how we've been influenced and taught, to fit erroneous teachings. Yasharal, oh, Yasharal, do you honestly believe that we should stop with one man and one woman? If that's the case, where does that leave the single one who never marries? Where does that leave the woman? If it's more women than men when it comes to marriage. Do we see anywhere in scripture where Yahushua separated one and said, this one is my bride? This one is my chosen. Be mindful of these words, Yashara, for many will kick against some of the things I will speak on. Be also mindful that it goes beyond just marriage as we know it, because it tells us, O oh Yashara, that there's more to it than just the man and the woman and the children. Consider this. Matthew 19, 29 through 30 says, And everyone who hath left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. But many who are first shall be last and the last first. So if it's saying that everyone who left father or mother or wife, does that mean if the person left a wife that they cannot be a bride? They cannot be a part of the bride of Yahushua? Or is there a marriage 
that goes beyond just a man, a woman, and children. I believe the latter. Consider Luke 12, 51 to 53 said, do you think that I came to give peace on earth? I say to you, no, but rather division. For from now on, five in one house shall be divided, three against two, two against three. Father shall be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter, daughter against mother, mother-in-law against a daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Yashara, my brothers and sisters, there's a separation that occurs in the forging together of the set apart ones of Yahuwah. In the name of Yahushua, I come to you as your brother, Simoniah, and say to you, it is time to ask yourselves who or what has influenced you when it comes to marriage, when it comes to understanding marriage. Marriage is a connection. It is a connection to grow together. It is a connection that binds. It is a connection where many are brought into one to fulfill the ultimate connection with the Almighty Father Yahuwah through His Word brought before us in the name of Yahushua. We must ask ourselves, do our belief of marriage center around what this Western culture or some other culture? Or is it centered around the endless boundaries that the Almighty Father has set forth that are connected to set apartness that yet brings about a oneness? Who or what has influenced you regarding your perception of marriage? My brothers and sisters, the Almighty Father will make us whole. We will become unified for this final exodus. Unity will come. Let me read the following. Come with me, please, O Yashara, to Isaiah 61.10. Isaiah 61.10. It says, I greatly rejoice in Yahuwah. My being exalts in my Almighty One, for He has put garments of deliverance on me. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself, herself with her jewels. The Scriptures tell us on many occasions, it defines our relationship with the Almighty Father as a bride who awaits her husband, who is being trained by the husband. Hosea, come with me to Hosea chapter 2, verse 19 and 20. Hosea chapter 2, verse 19 and 20 reads, And I shall take you as a bride unto me forever, and take you as a bride unto me in righteousness, in righteousness, and in right rulings and loving commitment and compassion, compassion. And I shall take you as a bride unto me in trustworthiness, and you shall know Yahuwah. Is he talking about one person, one individual? Is our mind stuck on one husband, one wife, and that's the only example of a marriage? Maybe some children, maybe not. If that's the case, who is this bride? It, does this bride not make up many, made one by Yahushua? Let me continue. Revelation twenty-two seventeen. Come with me there, my brother, my sister, to Revelation twenty-two seventeen. For it reads, the spirit and the bride say, come. And he who hears, let him say, come. And he who thirsts, come. And he who desires it, take the water of life without praying. My brothers and sisters, it is important that we understand that marriage is more than just that one man and that one woman and a child or two or more. Marriage is the connection of more than one to represent that structure 
that the Almighty Father, you who have designed. And in this word, he speak of the many being one by the blood of the lamb, by the power and might of Yahushua Mashiach, we are joined and we will understand what's more important. Correction will come regarding marriage. It will come for the unequally yoked as well. You see, some people probably say, well, I married. I didn't know any better. Did you see where I read? Let me go back to it. Where it talks about in Matthew 19, 29, someone leaving mother or wife. You see, there's some unyoked marriages. People married, they come into the truth, and they realize that they are unequally yoked. The time is coming, my brothers and sisters, where we will see all corrections regarding marriage, regarding unity, regarding what is necessary for this final exodus come to be. Know this, O Yasharal. Understand that there is divorce. Divorce exists. In Matthew 5, 31, it said, and it has been said, whoever puts away his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. This doesn't mean for us to take this scripture and uh, marry. If we don't like the wife, just divorce her. If the wife don't like the husband, divorce her. It doesn't mean that we disregard the commitment we make a husband and a wife or wives make. Yes, I believe that there are three dynamics and connections. There's the single person, and I'll speak on it shortly. Married to Yahushua Mashiach. But yet, naturally, single. There's the monogamous marriage. One husband, one wife. Who demonstrate what it is to be married to Yahushua. By demonstrating love and forgiveness. Growing together and set apartness and maturity. In unity as one as designed by the Almighty Father. And there's the polygynous marriage. One husband, multiple wives, who together also demonstrate Yahushua's relationship to his bride, where there are many. If you are one who kick against the pricks when it comes to polygyny because your wife has influenced you or this Western culture have influenced you, but yet you, vehement, you strongly say you believe the scriptures, you strongly believe that the scriptures are true, you're walking in a divided situation. How can you embrace the scriptures and talk so much about Yashara and set of partners, even the final exodus, which is the result of a polygynous marriage? Yeah, Jacob, whose name was changed to Yashara, commonly known as Israel, the 12 tribes came from 12 different women. Well, not 12 different women, from different women, because some of them had two, two representatives from the tribe. So the 12 tribes came from more than one woman. Let me put it that way. It came from a polygynous marriage. The very essence of believing the scriptures and saying you want to be set apart requires us to embrace that there are single, monogamous, and polygynous marriages all together reflecting set apartness and how to be one and how to govern yourself. Just because man has perverted, just because you had some people jump out there and trying to ha have little private orgies and different things, just because wickedness exists in the flesh war against the spirit, that does not make null and void what the Almighty Father has set up and structured for his children, for his people. Let me read. Matthew chapter 10 through 9. And they said, Boucher allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce. And it, it quotes here, a reference Deuteronomy 24.1 and 24.3 to put away. And Yahushua said to them, because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote you this commandment. 
You see, there are some whose hearts are hardened, not obeying. And if there's disobedience within a couple, if there's total disobedience, total rebellion and disregard for the ways that the Almighty Father set, he leaves the opportunity for divorce. Not for convenience sake. This is when a heart is so hardened and you see that that person is not walking and set apart. This is not doing what he or she ought to do. He goes on to say, however, from the beginning of the creation, the Almighty One made them male and female. For this cause, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. And the, and the two shall become one flesh, so that they no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what the Almighty One has joined together, let man not separate. Notice it says in Genesis chapter 1, this is when he created Adam and Eve, my brothers and sisters. How the beginning started for that relationship between a man and a woman. So often we stop at that scripture and say, nope, that's saying a woman, a woman, just as man and woman. We, when we stop and just look at the text, we stumble and fall. When we look at the text and let the spirit makes alive, we look at all of the scriptures. You see, again, there are many of us who represent the children of Yahuwah, but we are one bride to Yahuwah. Can one say, I'm his bride, and another say, I'm his bride? Indeed, for the two are his bride. But we are one. And we will come to understand marriage beyond what these Western cultures and different cultures have been instituted in our minds. And many men who say, I don't believe in polygyny, examine them carefully and strongly, and you will find that these are men whose wives are so strongly influenced, who strongly influence them that they dare not say they want a second wife. My brothers and sisters, this segment, though you hear me talking about polygyny, it's about marriage and the matchup. If one is called to be single, let us receive him as the bride of Yahushua as a single person. If one is called to be monogamous with one wife, let us receive them as one and be monogamous. If one is called to manage more than one wife, let us receive them as one, as Yahushua has established. Let us learn to discern what we're called to do. Let not a single person be jealous and envious of the monogamous or polygynous marriage. Let not the monogamous marriage be jealous of the single person and try to act single and disregard their mate. Yahushua doesn't disregard us and we're his mate. Let us not disregard that some are given the strength and the skill sets to manage multiple wives. Let us not be jealous or envious of the woman who have sister wives, companion wives, and they share in all that is ordered by Yahuwah, they recognize that, they're, that that one husband is the practical and natural head, but together they demonstrate relationship. We should not be envious of the conviction that we have been given regarding what state we should be in when it comes to marriage. But more than anything, we must go beyond the natural institution of marriage and look at the spiritual side of marriage, which is the connection of growing together as one, as the scriptures lay out. Let me give you a good example. There's a verse that said we're neither Hebrew nor Greek or Jew nor Gentile. So you hear people saying, oh, we don't know whether we're Jew or Gentile. We just know we all saved. If we disregard we would have to disregard Revelation 7 chapter when it talks about, I saw 12 tribes, uh, 144,000 from each of the 12 tribes in a great multitude of many nations, kindreds, and tongues, if we disregard nationalities. 
So what does this verse say when it say we need the Greek nor Jew or Hebrew nor Jew? I mean, Hebrew nor uh, uh, Greek or, 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 or Hebrew nor Goyim, which means other nations. It's talking about the spirit. There's more than just our physical nationality. There's the spirit of an individual. And ultimately, that's what it's about. It is the spirit of man. Link with Yahushua Mashiach. For these earthen vessels will go right back to the earth where they came. It's time to start asking, am I embracing the institutions, the construct that Yahuwah has laid out? Or am I fighting a single person that say you shouldn't be married because they're unlearned? Or the monogamous marriage that say you should have just one wife? Or the polygynous unlearned that's saying you need to have multiple wives to each our convictions that are parallel to scripture to represent Yahushua's relationship to his bride, us collectively, the set apart children, those who seek to do the will of the Almighty Father. We will learn this, O Yasharal. We will learn this unwaveringly. You see, there are those that are single. And if they focus, if the eyes are on the Almighty Father and doing what he says, then my brothers and sisters, if I was single doing what he says, I would have no problem fellowship, you know, interacting with a monogamous or a polygynous marriage. For I am called to be single, whether man or woman. And we will learn the importance of that how not to push our convictions on another, how not to let our strong will wise say, I ain't having another wife up in here. Do they dictate the construct of the almighty father? Or even the man who say, I want multiple wives for the wrong reasons because wickedness in the flesh war against the spirit, let us not set aside that the very book that we support, that we believe in, the nation of Yashara as a whole, again, is from a polygynous marriage. Single. Let me read the following, Yashara. It says, and I say this as a concession, not as a command. For I wish that all men were even as myself, but each one has his own gift from the Almighty One, one in this way and another in that, as I just described. He goes on to say, and I say to the unmarried and to the widows, it is good for them if they remain even as I am. But if they do not have self-control, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Now, reading that, keep in mind, he started out by saying, he said this in concession, not as a command. This is his perspective, Shaul's. Was he led by the set-apart spirit? Yes, demonstrating that individuals will have different concessions. This is what he's saying. And he's saying, and to the married, I command not. I command, not I, but the master. A wife should not separate from a husband. And because it say a wife, people believe it stops again the magnitude of marriage goes beyond what we know as just one man and one woman. For the body of Yasharal is the bride of Yahushua. In these days, O Yasharal, those who will be among the final exodus, among the children of obedience, will understand the true meaning and not take this one scripture and fight against the constructs. You see, it would be a contradiction if they say in one wife, but then he wants us to acknowledge the 12 tribes of Yashara from a polygynous marriage. And the scriptures does not impart that when we let the spirit make the scriptures alive. When we use our own intellect to comprehend, then we see what may appear to be a contradiction because we fail to see the life in the scriptures. He goes on to say, but if she is indeed separated, let her remain unmarried or be restored to favor with her husband and let her husband not send away a wife. Yashara or oh Yashara. Marriage. Matchup. 
one wife. For some, it will be. For others, it will not be. I say to you, O Yasharal, what are you searching for? The influences of the you of Yahuwah, the Almighty One? The construct that he's laid out for nation building, all the nation building tenets? A nation will have some single, will have some monogamous, one man, one wife, and will have a polygynous marriage. A nation would. And for you women who are alone, who are praying and crying for a husband, are you allowing your westernized programming cause you to not understand the dynamics of polygyny? Do you think that the Almighty Father would create more women than men to leave you absent of understanding a natural display of love and marriage? I say to you, change your mindset. Now, let me say this, Yasharal. I'm not saying commit bigamy, transgression against the law. So don't go get a marriage license for five different wives or two different wives for in this country that is against the law. By the mercy and the favor of the Almighty Father Yahuwah, the commitment to be connected and grow together as one can occur absent of getting a marriage license as this country and some countries might require you. You must make that decision and not look for an excuse not to comply with whatever the Almighty Father is bringing you to represent. So if you are one wife or husband with one wife, do not push your convictions on another. Let me read the following. Trustworthy. This is uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 through 7. It reads, Trustworthy is the word. If a man longs for the position of overseer, he desires a good work. An overseer then should be blameless, the husband of one wife, and sober, sensible, orderly, kind to strangers, and able to teach. My brothers and sisters, when it comes to teaching, one teaches, another teaches, many teach. But the buck, the buck stops with that headship individual. Case in point, a community who has a pastor, what he teaches, those who are under his shepherdship will teach. So the larger the responsibility, it is encouraged and said, let that person be with one wife. But the buck stopped with that teacher that is quote unquote high among the ranks. There are those who will say, well, this person, the buck stops with him. Well, he might think that, but when we know his teachings are off, there's a teacher greater. There's one who sees that the individual who think he's an overseer is not so much an overseer when his self and flesh is emanated, but yet he calls it truth. My brothers and sisters, there is the overseer and overseer over a multitude. So we cannot, well, I can't say we cannot. It's unwise to just think the overseer is anybody who teach and he can only have one wife. It would be unwise. The overseer is that person that heads up a large group of set apart children of Yasharal to the magnitude that warrants the title of an overseer. We must know what that means. It says this person should not be given into wine nor a brawler, but gentle, not quarrelsome, no lover of silver. One who rules his own household well, having his children subjection with all reverence. And some say, say, wait a minute. See, he's talking about his household, his household. Yes, the overseer. We must recognize the overseer as the one who has been elevated by the spirit of the almighty father 
to oversee, to shepherd, that sees beyond his, his fleshly desires and understand the war that his flesh brings against his spirit. We must understand who is truly an overseer and who this is applying to. And if a man does not know how to rule his own house, how shall he look after the assembly of the almighty one? Not a new convert, lest he become puffed up with pride and fall into judgment of the devil. He should, and he should even have a good witness from those who are outside, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. The overseer, who is the true overseer? That is the one, if he have a wife, it should be one wife. Yasharal, Yasharal. If you truly understand what is getting ready to happen regarding bringing Yasharal into unity, then you will understand that marriage matchup will deal with the single, the monogamous, and the, polyg and the polygynous, those who are in polygynous marriages. Let me read this, O Yasharal. Genesis 32, 12 says, For you said, I shall certainly do good to you and shall make your seed as the sand of the sea, which are too numerous to count. Now, you, do you think this promise that the Almighty Father made, this covenant he made with Abraham, and it's more men to women, do you think he would use the excuse, well, a lot of men are gay, a lot of men in prison, a lot of men are wicked, as an excuse for a woman not to have a covering? There are no excuses. We must pursue set of partners, the things that are righteous according to the word. And there will be some women who will have a single husband. There will be some women who will be the only wife. And there will be some women and widows, single, you see, my brothers and sisters, even in Genesis 28, 14, your seed shall be as the dust of the earth and you shall break forth to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south and all the clans of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your seed. My brothers and sisters, that seed, Yahushua, that seed of righteousness, that seed that makes us one as the bride of Yahushua, that brings us one as one set apart people Worshiping and obeying the Almighty Father comes with many different structures that line up. I'm not talking about what the wicked one is doing or those who, ab who abuse or, 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 or take advantage of the construct that the Most High have set up. And the scriptures will prove, and true leadership will prove what a pure polygynous relationship should be what a relationship between one man and one wife shall be, what a single person's relationship with Yahushua as the bride will be, in the discipline that the Almighty Father presents. It will come to be, O Yasharal, and if you cannot receive it, it would be most difficult for you to believe that you would be a part of the final exodus, for the final exodus will be a people of unity brought together. Revelation 7, 4 says, And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of all the tribes of the children of Yasharal. Twelve, and if you read further, you'll see it say 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, with the 12th tribe being represented by the grandson Manasseh. Dan is not mis mentioned in this chapter. Yasharal, oh Yasharal. Let me also read this. Isaiah 4.1 says, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We shall eat our own food and wear our own clothes. Only let us be called by your name and take away our reproach. You see, there are those who have one husband, and I'm not suggesting multiple husbands, that's wicked. But the wife, the one wife and one husband where the wife scorns the one that in her mind never could be married and just missed out 
and don't know how to treat, you know, the attacks, the scorn, the reproach, the erroneous, wicked behaviors that they throw out, mistreat the women that don't have a husband. You see, that will change. They will look and see that though that though the wife, though she been granted one husband, or the husband, though he been granted that one wife, will see that there will be polygynous marriages. Coverings will exist. There will be benefits in both scenarios. Both scenarios require us to demonstrate the love that Yahushua had for us as his bride. So whether it be monogamous or polygynous or being single, we must never stop at the need to demonstrate what is necessary for the working together of a set apart people by the almighty father Yahuwah in Yahushua's name. We will begin to discern and know all there is to receive regarding marriage as we find ourselves facing severe times during, end time, during these end times. As widespread destruction and death ramp up, as earthquakes in diverse places, as storms and tsunamis, as mountains move, as rivers turn to blood, as destruction comes, the children of Yahuwah will be humbled and yield to the right teachings, the right construct, the right structure that the Almighty Father has for his children as he began gathering them for the final exodus. Yashra, my brothers and sisters, marriage matchup. Know the whole matter and do not be closed mind to just the Western culture. Know the whole matter and do not kick against what the Almighty Father is doing to bring his people together. And to you, my brothers and sisters, remember, to you women who yearn for an oversight, overseer, or who learn, I shouldn't say an overseer because I, I just spoke of that and the definition is in different contexts, but who yearn for someone to cover you as a husband. Remove the Western culture and look at the very culture of Yasharal that you embrace. Look at the very dynamics of the teachings you embrace from Genesis to Revelation. Do not toss anything out and know that there's opportunity for you to experience love naturally and physically as a bride. There are men who are on meat who are obedient, who are walking in set of partners that know exactly how to manage a polygynous marriage. And there are those who don't. And to those who do, teach those who don't. And you will find the spirit of you who are stirring within you. Each and every construct of marriage, as I mentioned, in this matchup that I mentioned, we will learn to understand their dynamics and not pit them one against another. Know the whole matter, my brothers and sisters. There are many things that must happen, my brothers and sisters. There's much that must occur between now and our gathering. We must begin to have wholesome discussions, questions that leads to answers, not foolish questions, not vain questions, but questions that lead to set apart answers. We must learn how to yield and separate ourselves from the grumblings of those who are unlearned and undisciplined. We must learn when to come away and when together and set apartness, my brothers and sisters. Yashra, my brother, my sister. Watch as the hand of the Almighty Father work and stir within us and through us, as his spirit bring us into unity to accept the things that are necessary for nation building from a natural, practical, and spiritual perspective. Rise up, O Yashara, with the strength to yield and lean into the set-apart ways of Yahuwah and escape the conditioning from the westernized cultures and other cultures that kick against what the Almighty Father has set forth. Remember I said, no nation 
divided against itself should stand. To pick and choose one part of scripture and disregard another is walking contradiction. To say you believe in the scriptures and ignore that Yahuwah will have some be single, some be monogamous, some be polygynous. To ignore any of those, but say you believe the scriptures is a contradiction. We must come to recognize how from a whole perspective, a righteous perspective, a teaching perspective, as led by the spirit of Yahuwah sent in Yahushua's name, how these things will prove to be made right in the coming days as this final exodus comes to be. Stay tuned, O Yashra. There are so many details and processes. There are so many dynamics. There are so many teachings we must escape from that are erroneous and wicked. We must adjust and adapt to what is true, to the correction that is coming by the Almighty Father. And for those who will fulfill the final exodus, Know this, I believe countdown 2023. Keep in mind before leaving and crossing the pond, being gathered from the four corners, we must reach a degree of unity in order to wholly come together, W-H-O-L-L-Y, as a whole, representing a set-apart awakening nation, obedient to the spirit of the Almighty Father Yahuwah, sent in Yahushua's name, representing the sacrifice and resurrection. Pray and watch, O Yashara. These matters are serious. And if your heart's desire is to lean into what is true and you're having a hard time, pray. Discuss these matters. I invite your questions, your comments. Pray. Seek wise counsel. Counsel that will provide and equip you with the things you would need in the event of that person's absence. You could still lean closer and closer into the bosom of the spirit of the Almighty Father in Yahushua's name and grow strong until gathered or until brought home until judgment time. Stay tuned, O Yashara. There's so much to consider so much to pray about, so much to act and respond to. There's much more to come. I salute your patience, your tolerance, your pursuit of set-apartness. My name is Simonai, and I come to you with these words, O Yasharal. Pray earnestly and seek to discover the life and what is true. If you want to provide support and the gathering together of Yasharal, both Hebrews and Gentiles, Abraham and Goyim, other nations who are brought together, drawn by the power and might of the Almighty Father Yahuwah. If you want to support the things that I am compelled to contribute towards that gathering, I invite you to go to yahswatchman.net. There's a contact form. Fill it out. And I'll respond to you. I have not been as efficient as I should have in the past. I ask your forgiveness. Yahswatchman.net. There's a contact form. Fill it out. I'll reach out to you. We can arrange how you can contribute, whether it be resources, skills, talents given to you, gifted to you by the Almighty Father, or whether it be finances. Yashara, O oh Yashara, set apart nation. Behold, end times are here, and our deliverance is truly closer than we realize. On that note, I say to you, be encouraged. Shalom.